I've been studying how to DIY beekeeping. I'm not sure I'm going to do it, but I did take a basic class at Sono Kello Apiaries, and I followed up with this video, uh, learning how to get some experience hands-on. They produce some fantastic honeys that are amber, uh, light, or dark colored every year, depending on the flowers and you know the wetness. This year we had a drought, and they produced a cream honey for the first time in their decades of producing honey. It's really thick and very delicious. So, hi, I'm David Forfia. I'm the head beekeeper of Sonoquello Apiaries, which is a hobbyist apiary in Georgetown, Texas. We run 12 hives here in Georgetown, we have another four at Atlanta. Today we're harvesting from our Atlanta hives. So and are you, do you do processed honey, raw honey? Everything's raw honey. We don't heat it up. We don't pasteurize it. So. Okay. Hi, I'm Diane Forfia. I am the assistant. I don't normally go out in the yard, but I can to Sono Quello Apries. <laughs> oh, I'm the assistant. I'm David Donovan Forfia. So we're doing bee honey harvesting. What's the overall process today? So today um, we're going to start with actually getting the hives, the, the supers that we took off our hives in Lano. Um, we're going to cut the wax off, we're going to put them in the extractor, and we're going to go through and run the radial extractor, which extracts the honey off of both sides of the frame. It's going to go up against the tank, and it's going to flow out the front while we're doing that, and we should get somewhere close to 10 gallons of honey out of those two boxes. Wow, is that a lot for a normal year? Um, that's not too bad. Um, had some relatively strong hives at Atlanta. Um, the cactus, the mesquite, um, and then just the wild stuff out in Lano bloom after the rain late August. Mm -hmm. So it's a late harvest this year. So okay. it'll be interesting to see how it tastes. Is this your first harvest this year? This is the only harvest this year. Okay. So, Do you um, usually have one, two, or three? We, we usually harvest in May and June. Okay. And right now we're spinning November on in late November because we've got to get the honey off the, the hives to mm -hmm. be able to treat them with medicines during the the winter to mm. take down the mites that are on the hives. Okay. So you can't leave the honey that you're going to eat on the hives when you put the medicines on. Okay. So the only thing that's going to be left on the hives after we pull these boxes is going to be the the brood boxes where they live. And then a honey box, which always stays on um, the hives. Okay. So, that's a grabber. That's the name of it? Yeah, it's got a spring on it. Okay. And it's going to grab the frame because they're too tight together and I can't get them out. So this is a full one. Uh, yeah, and he didn't, he took some out of that one. So I'm going to squeeze it together. No, I brought it. Okay. Okay. There's one. Let's just set this one right here. We're going to... Spin the Lano honey. Lano, Texas honey. Uh -huh. And then we're going to go out and harvest the Georgetown honey. Georgetown. And we're going to bottle them both and taste them and see if we can see and taste the difference. And what kind of flowers were they, or pollen Mostly were they? Mostly mesquite and Lano. Mesquite flowers. And I have no idea on Georgetown. Sun okay. City. Yeah. Sun City flowers. <laughs> yeah. This is an interesting year because of the drought, right? Yep. We're lucky to get anything. A few bees left in there. So you brought this down, these? We pulled them yesterday. From Lano? Evening, yep. And then how how far away is that from here? 75 miles. 75 miles. And then are these on top of each other when they're producing these two layers? Nope, this one was on the other different colors. Okay. The bottom matches the blue body. And what is what are they got on the other one? A white body, so they're going to match hives that were left out in Lano. And then, how much does each one of these trays weigh? The the blue and the white. If it was full, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It says seven. They have ten. It'd be about a hundred pounds. Hundred. Wow. Wow. Hundred two. Hundred ten. Two hundred ten. No wonder it's one hundred ten. Okay, and this is basically a big centrifuge, right? Yes, this is an 18 frame radial extractor. Oh, you put and you put that whole little slot, what's that little slot called? Is that a frame? That's a frame. And you're gonna put them in there, the whole thing in there? Yes, the whole frame goes in. It spins both sides at the same time. This is a radial extractor, which means it works like the, the wheel on a bike. Okay. So both sides of the frame will be extracted at the same time. Okay. Um, if you have a tangential extractor, you only extract one 
um, side at a time. So you okay. have to spin it once, and then flip it over to do the other side. This is okay. all about centrifugal force spinning the So this is faster, right? This is much faster. It also has 18 frames. It also has an electric motor, which um, my other extractor was all about hand cranking. And what I can tell you is really glad to have an electric motor. Okay. Burned up a drill two years ago trying to harvest. Oh, wow. I'm trying to use a drill to spin the hand crank extractor. So this is a frame that comes right out of the hive. The when you, Yeah. We'll use that here and take, put it on the plastic. And then, this is a hot knife. Extremely okay. hot. Around the so the idea is we're going to turn it on a 45 degree angle. And we're going to lay it against that plastic. Okay. So all that that sticks out from the is going to fall in here. Well, that's all coming off. This is all high that the bees make right here. Yep. And that's just a plastic frame. So we're going to cut it. There's also the other plastic on the other side. So we're going to lay it 45 degree. Okay. It's going to roll off and it's going to make like a little cigar. It's going to fall in there. And a third of our honey that we get today is going to be in this bucket. And then after you scrape it off, that goes in the extractor? Mm -hmm. we the spin centrifuge? It. That's what the nails were. We okay. spin it, we do the other side, and I'm going to hand it to him, and he's going to get the other two-thirds by spinning. Oh, cool. This has to sit about a week mm -hmm. for it to drain into the lower tub. There's two tubs in here. Okay. So if you raise this up, if you can. Okay, just, it just goes through. It's then. just a screen, and that's where the honey sits. Okay. All the wax will be up top to make candles or whatever else you want. So, and this is... Beeswax. Mm -hmm. a, a ton of beeswax. We're going to get a lot of beeswax. This is going to be full. So that's what the And that will all drain all through the beeswax down. You have to stir the top of it at any time? It'll drain. Because gravity is going to make it. Honey is so heavy. Okay. It'll, Compared to the wax? It, the octagon shape holds it. When we break that octagon shape, it's going to flow right Can you out. taste that right there? Mm -hmm. You can, can I... right You can smash it. Smash deep into it. You can eat the comb too. Oh, that's good. That's a light colored honey, isn't it? Mm hmm. Mm. And this is a scratcher. So we're only going to take frames that are capped. So everything's been capped. If we get, I don't see anything that I need to. So after we uh, cut it with a knife, if the knife couldn't get to it, because it's, see how that was concave past the plastic? If the knife couldn't hit it, we're going to scratch it open. All right, we ready to start? And you only pull in the frames that don't have eggs, right? Or larvae, or what do you call them? He had a queen excluder between the one box you don't see. Oh, so this is she all honey. She couldn't crawl up. Okay. We should see no babies. We can get, we'll do the fat side. What's that? Bee eggs are a little crunchy? Yeah, bee, bee eggs are a <laughs> little crunchy. It's protein. Good protein, but they're not good eats. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're going to see how much is... This is a bee break. We're not going to need it, but... All right, we're going to get an extreme amount. So that's basically a hot iron. Very hot iron. Enough to catch a thing on fire. You know, it won't catch nothing on fire, but you can't sit too long or you'll melt the wax that we don't want to melt. We don't want to melt the octagons inside. Can you Now, when you put them in the spinner, does it have to be balanced so that it doesn't wobble and you have to have one on each it's, side? It's going to wobble. Okay, um, no matter what. Right. Right. But, but yeah, what I'll do is I'll try to balance it because we've only got 16 and a half frames on this time. It's okay. going to wobble. So it goes in a little blocks and then it sits in a little trough. And that's right. it? You don't tie it down or anything? No, because when it spins, it'll be They're pushed up against. Remember the thing they have at like the, the fair where they'll pin you up against the wall? Oh, yeah, yeah, the thing. ride. Same deal. So yeah. it's going to push the frame up against the side. All the honey is going to come up against this wall, go down to the bottom. Notice it has a raised center. Mm -hmm. Everything heads towards the drain spout. So once we start spinning, um, all the honey will come out, drain down the sides to the bottom, and into the 
double sieve and then into the bucket. And then we'll strain it a second time before we bottle it. And then how long does it have to spin? Uh, until it's light. About so eight minutes. Eight to ten minutes. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, which is the advantage of having an electronic motor as opposed to... You can do other stuff. <laughs> hand crank? As opposed to the hand It'll crank. It'll make a different noise when it starts to get... You can see them? Okay, so some are, some are capped and some are not capped. And you said... 70%. 70 70% are capped, you can harvest it. Mm -hmm. Right. And then what about the uncapped ones? Does that mean there's see, no... there's uncapped. And there's it's nothing... Actually, does that mean there's... Oh, that's just a hole. Yeah, yeah. That, that's them building it out. See, if I touch it with my hot knife, watch what happens. See how deep it goes in? Yeah. So I destroyed over it. There's no honey in that. Okay. But when it was ready. Oh, so if 70% is capped, it's worth the effort to try to harvest it? It won't ferment. It will okay. burn the whole batch. Okay. So you can't put uncapped with capped. Why is that? It has too much water in it, and it will ferment. So when they okay. dehydrate the mixture of pollen, nectar, and water okay. to the right ratio, they cap it. Okay. Otherwise, they're, they're pretty smart, it. aren't they? Yep. I don't know how they know, but they fan it with yeah. the wings. When it, they yeah. fan it and it's the right consistency, they know to cap it. And these spots were capped, but they were touched like that one. See, it was touching mm -hmm. the other frame. Mm -hmm. and pulled off. Yeah, and then, so it was capped. So honey is the only food on the planet that doesn't spoil. Correct. Right? Yep. Unless you mix it with uncapped, <laughs> then it's not really honey. No, it'll make mead. Mead, so mead. okay. No, actually, so then that's a whole different party then when you make mead, party. right? Yeah. You don't want to eat it. <laughs> you want to drink it. No, I wouldn't want to do that. So we've only done two frames if you want to see how much is down in the bottom. Wow. We're going to get a ton. So. Any scratch you needed? No, this one did something odd, too. Oh, it's because it looked, doesn't look like it went all the way down to the frame. It was an outer frame. Yeah. All right. Just pull one out. Yep. Okay. So if I inspect this, I'd say more than 70% is capped. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't go, that one's missing. Because it got one. pulled apart when it was okay. glued See, to another. See, these are the parts that were touching the other frame? Yeah. And that's what happened to those. Okay. And then on this side. Put it on the nail. You got to see the nail? What am I putting on the nail? Is there a hole here? No, nope. just any part of that plastic. There you go. Okay. Yep, and it can spin now. Yep, when you're working. Right, do it closer to the middle, because otherwise you're going to be screwed. Sort of, there you go. And now you should be able to easily pivot it. So you just tilt this back, right like that. Make sure the front and the back touch the plastic, and you'll feel the weight go down. And if you're not confident, you can come out. Oh, 45 degrees, more of an angle. There you go. Just go real slow, and you'll feel the heat. You're not going to push so much as the heat. So that is gonna... cool. That's satisfying. Can you feel the heat cutting it? Yeah. And if you get stuck, it, it's like cutting it. cheese. But. <laughs> and don't hang around in once you're doing great. There you go. There you go. And then just flick it, it Flick it, push it into the bin. It's fine. Yeah. And there then you just go. spin it with your finger. And do the Same other side. Same side. Mm -hmm. Other yeah. side. Same thing. It's hard to get it going at the top, but once you get it going, as long as you're not pushing and letting the heat do the cut. Keep both sides on the plastic. They went over here, nothing there. Yep, there and then you need to do a little scratching. So then we'll put the tip. Does this go over here? Yeah, like that. Don't want it to touch the wax. It won't wax. melt the bucket either. Well, it won't melt the metal, but it'll smoke the wax. Where's the scratcher? Okay. So you just lightly scratch it. This way? You can either poke in. So let me see where your spots are. Okay. You can prick in, and then you can turn it sideways if you only got a little. And as soon as you see the white go, there it goes. Doesn't have to be hard. Just enough to go open the top. Yep. That's all you're trying to do. There you go. That's it. Then you go down anywhere that looks like white. So these white areas. It's kind of like spreading the peanut butter on bread a little bit there. Yeah, it's just a light scratch on the top. So you can have any amount of these little hexagons open, you're giving them an advantage. They can store more here. Yeah. yeah. They'll, they, fix, it, they'll fix your destroyed cups. And they don't have to <clears throat> spend the energy remaking that. Yeah, that's the most... Have you ever timed how long it takes? Well, it can Depends. Take us, for them to do like... If we've got a normal year, it would they'd fill the box up in five days. And you'd what? Just, yeah. If we have normal season, no drought. You'll be pulling a box, the whole box again in five to that seven That whole days. layer of all these, the entire what do you call these again? Cells. 
No, this frame. Frame? frame? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they'll fill the entire box in five to seven days. Wow. So you will harvest, uh, what, four or five times in the summer? Yes. That's good. And then spin the other side. And that, that means fill the cells, but they have to have the cells there first, right? Yeah, and it's a lot of effort to produce yeah. wax. Is it months to do all the cells? To fill um, that up with cells? Yeah, I mean, about like two months. So if you turn it, you got that one all done. And that one's, so you'll just do the little bits that you see that are white and nothing else. What do you do? You, you 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 get the honey, you sell the honey, right? Eat the honey and sell it, and then the wax. Uh, melts it down. Generally, she'll make candles out of it. And okay. Sell those. And sell those. Okay. And do they smell like honey when they burn? Mm. They're kind of neutral. Kind of, kind of neutral, unless okay. you put uh, essential oils in it. You can okay. You can also buy a industry standard mold. What is it? Eight ounces. Yes. A silicon mold and. Semiconductor and other industries use beeswax. Wow. For sure making. Um, okay. Medical facilities. Yes. Okay. And they'll buy it online for me. So you got honey, you have wax, and then do you collect pollen? No. Nope. You don't have the little pollen collector where they the scrape The pollen them collector actually rips the pollen basket off the bees. Okay. So, which means if you harvest the pollen that way, um, every bee that comes back can never harvest another bit of pollen. They have a little membrane oh. on their leg. Oh, it basically destroys their ability? Yeah. So okay. It decapitates their leg. Okay, I have to ask, how many times do you get bit? Stung? In stung. Here? That's right, stung. In here, none. They're not ants. Huh? They're not fire ants. They're not fire ants. They no. don't... They sting. So, Stingers. So, so These are all foragers. So okay. Bees. It's really hard to get stung by a forager. You have to get caught in your hair, you have to step on it. What's a forager? One who goes gathers. out and gathers stuff. They all have different jobs. Hmm. Remember right. the guards that love you? Yep. They don't gather honey. Yeah. Guards, on the other hand, it's real easy to get stung because yeah. their job is to defend the you hive. Yeah. Bees. And we put the uniforms on. That we're going to see some of those guys. <laughs> yeah, we'll see some of those as we go in. But generally, we're not, get, we're not getting all the way down into the... The body, but once you open the hive, yeah, they will defend their home. If you can. <coughs> and are there the Lano bees versus the Georgetown bees? Any information on are they aggressive? Are they calm? Was... Uh, we bought all of our queens from Bee Weaver or mm -hmm. R Weaver out of Nacogdoches, mm -hmm. which means they're not um, Africanized. Right? Okay. We bought it from a reputable apiary. So their queens are generally pretty docile, mm -hmm. um, which means it's hard to get stung. Um, occasionally the queens die or they stop laying, and then mm -hmm. the bees will replace the queen. Mm -hmm. And up in central Texas, we have Africanized bees, which means there's a probability, if they make their own queen, mm -hmm. that it's going to have Africanized tendencies, which means they're somewhat more aggressive. And you can tell when you go oh, to the hive? There's a distinctive yeah. difference between a domesticated bee from East Texas and um, an African bee. Are they crazy where you make you think, why am I doing this? Because these and guys... Generally, we can work the ones from East Texas, if it's a native queen, mm -hmm. one of their queens, mm -hmm. uh, without having to smoke them. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, even if they make their own queen up here, we've got enough drones that are the right kind. Okay. That they're somewhat aggressive, but they're not like, you know, a hurricane. Okay. Right, so, but, but generally, if we smoke them up here, then, then the bees are docile enough. This is what the rendered wax looks like. This has been um, filtered and melted three times to get nice and clean, but the way we filter it is using hose? just uh, old pantyhose or yeah. pantyhose from the dollar store to try to get the stuff that's less than a buck. And then it filters all the nasty stuff out and you end up with wax.
Mm. Yeah. Neutral. It smells yeah. like wax. It smells like wax. So yeah. this is just plain wax, and then we'll melt it down. And so, so you can see it's nice and round because yeah. it came out of a Goodwill crock pot that cost me a whopping four dollars. Yeah. So, but, but that's what the wax looks like after it's rendered. And then, how much? How many frames would make that much wax? Uh, no idea. Probably every time you clean out a hive, there's always extra wax where you don't want it. Okay. And you just scrape it up during the season. Three of those. Yeah, probably three frames. Wow, that's a lot of wax. Yeah, we're going to end up with a ton of wax after oh. we're done with this. And then we, you will sell it in chunks like this or for, we break it up we, and make candles only? Generally, we generally make candles out of it. Okay. But if we wanted to sell it, um, we cut it into 16-ounce um, bricks. And then when you make candles, you said you, you leave it like it is, put the wick or add some oils to give it flavor. We'll, we'll melt it down in a double boiler, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, pour it into a mold that looks like a candle. Mm -hmm. And then we'll add some essential oils and a wick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then after it sets up, you have a candle. And, okay. Uh, you can tell really tell the difference between a natural beeswax candle and a paraffin candle. Oh yeah. Beeswax burns much, much, much longer than uh, Oh really? Candle. Eight times as long. Wow. Okay. So of course this frame is not uniform in color. You have different colors in here. What's that from? Um, you know, the bees walk on the frames and it's over time the the wax gets dirty. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's the reason why when you spin it out, um, you're going to filter it because the, the dirt and the wax will stay there, but there's always the potential that there's going to be something that you want to filter out. There's also right? different colors of pollen different. based on where they harvest yeah. it. Yeah, okay. And the difference of what the, the um, nectar is they gather too. Okay. Right? So. How long does a queen live? Uh, two to five years. And then there's different... There's different uh, roles of different types of bees, right? And they have a life cycle. What, what's the life cycle of a bee? So it takes about 23 days for a bee to come out. Um, they come out of the little pod, so hatch. They, they, they come out of the cells. From a larvae to a bee or something. And they from, only live? They, they only live about... Three to five weeks. Three to five weeks during the, the summer. And are they the foragers? They start out as, as nurse bees. Okay, taking and care of the queen take, and the, take, and the other the one. Yeah. Taking care of the larva. And then at, at some point they graduate up to being foragers, which are the people who go out and gather nectar and pollen um, to make honey out of. And then sort of the worst job at the hive is to be a guard because if something comes up like a raccoon or a beekeeper, yeah. uh, their job is to defend the hive. Oh. And so what they will do is they will defend the hive, which means they will fly and they will sting whatever is invading the hive, and a bee gets one sting, yep. not a wasp. So once they sting you, they're dead. Yep. Do, so. do, does a defender come from the foragers, or do they just come out same, of same, same bees, so you, you sort of go up through the ranks, right? So the hardest job is a forager, because you're flying eight or so miles away mm -hmm. from the hive to get mm -hmm. honey mm -hmm. and nectar. And... Uh, that generally makes for a relatively short lifespan because you've got spiders, you've got mm -hmm. you know, pesticides, you've yeah. got you know, people. Other things, people, other things that like to eat bees. And does a forager turn into a guard? or is... at, at the end of the thing, they're going to end up being a guard. Okay, and then they fall by the hive when they're and done. Then, and then when their life is over, the, the people who maintain the hive will pick it up, fly it 50 feet away from the hive, and drop them. Oh, they dispose of their own. <laughs> they dispose of their own. Okay. Their hives very clean. So three to five weeks, you said. During the summer. Yeah. The, ones for, the ones for overwintering uh, last longer, but their job is primarily to keep the hive clean and to keep the queen warm. So when you see a bee in your garden, don't feel bad. They're at the end of their life. So if you accidentally smush them, <laughs> mm -hmm. they don't have long to go. <laughs> so the... it's all, and again, it's really hard to get stung by a forager. The only thing it wants to do is visit... Um, flowers and fly back to the hive so unless you step on it grab it get it caught in your hair um, it's really hard to get those bees to sting you so you're doing this in the house why is that i know it outside well if you do it outside um, <laughs> our remaining hives will rapidly come to exposed honey and at some point, it's not fun with thousands of bees flying around you trying to do the extraction. This is so good. So the motor had a hard time with all of them in there, so we now put every other frame.
brand new machine. So that's a lot higher. Hold on. <laughs> I feel it's starting to slow down. Can you see what's in the bottom? I just want to see that pattern. It's pretty good. Wow, that's good. <laughs> you like it? What? Go ahead. You, get, you know the cheese boards you get at expensive restaurants? They bring in Are you going to eat the whole thing? Uh -huh. Yeah. You're going to eat the hive? Or? This is topping. That's just a capping. Really oh my gosh. Isn't it good? Wow. Have you seen the expensive restaurants when they bring your cheese board? Oh my gosh. Two more minutes. Two that's more minutes. minutes. That's like Eight candy. Minutes. We're going to carry these out front to let the bees eat the remnants. You can follow them probably halfway. You'll get okay. a buzz before you get a bite. I'll get a buzz before I get a bite. There's the other frames and boxes that didn't have enough in there to produce, and so the bees are coming over to eat. I don't have my beekeeper outfit on, so I'm not going to go over there. Is it true if you move real slowly they don't bother you as much as if you're moving fast? No, not really. Oh, that's a clean one? That's a clean one. That's awesome. So, that's what it looks like before they build it out. Okay. So how long will it take them to clean those out? Uh, three to four days. They should be done by the end of the week. Okay. And what did you say about the tarps inside the house? And Whatever tarps, if you get any honey on them, um, you just hang them over the clothesline. They'll come and clean them up, and it'll look like you'd sent them through the washing machine. Oh, cool. Same thing with the extra buckets. So when we leave the buckets, the way to clean the buckets is you just leave them on the picnic tables, and in a couple days, there's nothing in them. And at least some of these are probably from your existing hives here in Georgetown? Uh, that's old boxes on the left. No, right. the bees themselves. The ones here, that's all Lena. We brought five from Lena. But the bees are from, from Georgetown. Okay, so they're going to go back. Yeah, like they're bring going it back here, back to the hives that we're going to go. Yeah. And why do you keep it so far from your hives? Um, one, you don't want to put it. The closer you get to the hives, the more they'll bring other bees in to raid. The hives. Oh, okay, because so it's. You want to keep the stuff to clean up far, far away. Okay, because so somebody else's hives or bees are probably here too. Then. Oh yeah. Okay, we don't want it. We don't want to create a war yet, right? Yeah, and we also don't want every Africanized bee that's feral out here coming too. To okay. As you can smell that god awful scent that you currently smell, which you're not going to be able to see in the video. Uh, this is honey robber. So honey robber is a chemical that's going to drive the bees off the supers when we put it on, uh, which is easier to do than blowing them off with like a leaf blower, which is mm. another way to do it. Um, but what I can tell you is it smells god awful and it will make your eyes burn. And how do you put it on there? You spray it on, or um, I'll show you when I get down there because okay. it's god awful and we don't want to do it until okay. we actually have to. <laughs> so we'll do it when we're down there. So it I'm gets like, rid of bees and people, right? Uh, yeah, it keeps the people away too. <laughs> Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm late in the smoker because the two hives we're going to start out with, hi big bird, are two of our more aggressive hives because they're big. So we're going to smoke them before we start taking them off because you're a novice and it's not going to, I could do it without smoking them. Okay, thank uh, you. I appreciate David, that. David can't do them without smoking them. So I've just got the smoker. Is it because they get all over you and he doesn't like it? Or? Uh, it's... Well, one, you'll notice the, I've got my lovely Pro Grant label that's a lovely shade of black. Um, so the bees are attracted to black. So I have a whole ton of bees right around here 
which I will be able to feel, but they won't be able to see me. Okay. They're attracted there. That's the reason why the black and white gloves that you brought, oh. I, predict, I predict pain. Okay, so, there you go. Um, also, you notice the gloves that you have, um, they're calfskin or goatskin for the whole top. And then mine are um, uh, a synthetic um, to go from there. Um, that goes up over top of my arms, but they can't really sting any place but on the seams. Mm -hmm. So if you do get a sting, it's going to be part of a stinger making it into your finger through a seam. So if you feel a sting, make sure you pull the stinger out of the glove. Okay. Because otherwise it's going to continue to okay. pump okay. until you take it off your body. Yeah. So it, when the bee stings you, it'll rip the, the stinger out. There's a, a stack of poison that's on there. And until you get the barb out of your body, it continues to pump. So the general okay. idea is get it off as soon as possible. And am I getting the stinger off and the bee off or they'll separate? And my guess is after the bee stings you, she'll pull away from you and it rips the stinger out of her body, okay. which is sort of the kamikaze part yeah. of being a sting. And that's the reason why when you're done, just make sure if you get stung, first thing to do, get the stinger out of your body as soon as possible. And so when we, when we came to take the class, of course, I was all suited up when we went out there, but we weren't doing this much of stuff, no, right? I'm so gonna now take, they're going to be a little bit more upset. Well, one, I'm going to take them down to um, just the supers I want to leave on for the winter. So I'm going to take a lot of light, away a lot of their capacity, and I'm going to put Bego on it, which is going to force all the bees down into the hive. Mm -hmm. So when I start taking things off, all the bees that got chased down into the hive are going to want to boil back up, mm -hmm. and they're not going to be happy. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of the intention. So I just need to know, if I need to get out of there, do I walk or run? Just, just walk. Just walk. Just, just walk. You're wearing a bee suit at this point. If you get stung, you're going to get stung like a handful of times. Okay. If for whatever reason you have a reaction, I have an EpiPen here, okay. which will take care of anything if you go into anaphylactic okay. shock. Generally, most people don't. If you've been stung by a bee before, you'll know whether or not you're allergic. Okay. So out we're messing with the bees they okay lighten up the fire no it's just leaves just leaves so it's on top of a bit of ever popular hud smoking chips okay he so made a hot coal bed made a hot coal bed underneath and then the leaves just smolder the idea is you don't want a hot flame you just want to look like a train and the smoke makes them think what there's a fire we need to it just, it just calms them down part of okay. it is they used to say it was because it made them think that the forest was on fire and they would go eat um, other analysis has gone through and said that it just breaks up the way they communicate mm -hmm. um, and then be, because they can't tell each other to attack um, they're more calm but you can see them eat when you smoke them you can see them they go down butts up and they're sucking the honey out of their cell when they're honey sucking. And according to the latest stuff out of A&M, that's the fire and, and we're going to leave is a myth. Safety first. Got an experienced beekeeper. He's checked out my outfit, my suit, make sure there's no holes or gaps. So we're gonna get everything ready before we get going. So this is called the fume board. Um, and it's what you put honey robber on to drive the bees out of the supers we're gonna harvest.
It smells god awful. There's a reason why it's in a container with a plastic bag around it with its top on. With okay, another top on. Let me stand up when, right? <laughs> now you don't really have a choice. <laughs> You're gonna smell it. Is it like coyote urine or something? Coyote urine smells better. Oh. And you just put it on the board. Hi ladies. Okay. I heard my first bee. Yep. Is this, this gonna go on the very top? This will go on the very top as we start extracting. But I'm gonna get the smoker now. Because blue has a, a feral queen. This one's a little aggressive, orange is a little more aggressive. Okay, hear a lot of bees. Interesting sound. Not nearly as annoying as a mosquito sound. Is this electric fence? It takes out the horses. It's not on. The horses can't tell, so just come on through. So I'm smoking the tops and the bottoms because this is kind of your first rodeo. Mm -hmm. So, generally I don't smoke this much when I do it. So. That should be enough. Uh, there's the steam board. Put it over here. Set this on top of the metal. Now the fun begins. So, if at any time, Peter, you feel uncomfortable, just walk away. Just walk on back to that. I'll pick up this camera if you want. Oh. And you can see the front is facing backwards. Generally means these in public can get them up. Okay. Put the board on top. So, huh? in a, just a second. So this is what we're going to be harvesting. I don't know if this is full or fully capped. I'm guessing it's going to be partially capped. So we're going to start out by putting the gun off the board. Okay, How fast does that work? Uh, depends upon how hot it is. Uh, yesterday at Atlanta, it probably took about three to four minutes. Um, here, I'm going to give a little bit more and then I'm going to pick this up because this is going to be gone awful heavy. I'm going to put it down on top of that inner cover and let, let it on for a second. We're going to try to take these two? These two are coming. Okay, and then these will stay for the winter. These stay for the winter, and I'm going to take the queen excluder off. Queen excluder off. That keeps the queen from going up here, right? right? That's the reason why there's no um, uh, eggs in our, in our honey, because the queen can't get beyond that. Why would you take the excluder off here? Because at this point, I don't need one because I don't have anything to put. Okay, so this is just going to be two boxes for them. I might put on a third, depending upon how they look for the winter. But this is 100% full. This is 100% full. So these bees now are migrating down in three to five minutes. Yep. And then, as you can oh, see, you can hear them. Yeah, they're not. It happy. sounds like a fan. Yeah, they're they're not pleased with this stuff. Wow. So again, it chases them away. Can I come in from the other side? Uh, sure, but the more you stand in the front, okay. um, there's a reason why you work the hive from the back. Guards want to defend that way, not this way. Oh, you say front of the hive because they enter at the bottom, right? Right. Okay. So, watch Adam going your way. Ah! So. Give him a little bit. How many of these, what do you call this grouping of beehives? Is it a term? So this is a bee yard, so bee I yard. run I run six hives generally in each one of my bee yards. So, so we call this the Creekside Bee Yard. 
We're also going to harvest from what we call the Meadows Bee Yard, and we've got another five acre pasture at the top of the hill about a quarter mile away. Uh, we'll harvest from there. So I run two bee yards, six in this one, six in the one up in the Meadows. Uh, this has been a bee yard since 1992. 1992, that's cool. Yep. So started out with them on uh, railroad ties which are sitting in front of this bee yard. Mm -hmm. uh, with each passing year, there's only so many deep bee ones that you want to do. Yeah. So this one, probably not going to get very many frames out of it. What makes you say we only get a couple frames? Oh, because you can see right in there already? No. Okay. Not caps. Means it's it's going to become food, right? It's going to be sitting out in the front yard for them, and then the rest will go through. This is the queen excluder. Okay. So She's so big she can't fit through, She's right? too big, but all the other bees can. So this is just going to go in the back of the gator. Done. And then down here, this is their food for the winter. Ooh, that looks nice. So once we put medicines on the hive, so down here you can see they've got food. And then they've got a laying pattern where the queen is laid. So these are baby bees. Okay. Right, so remember those frames you said, that why does it look like this? Yeah. It's because one of those frames used to be part of a frame like this. Okay. And it had laying going on in there. So you can tell the pattern where they've got food on the outside. So there's their honey. And then they've got the bees on the inside. Their food, and this is where they're going to overwinter. So. Let me pull the frame back out again. And you can tell they're starting to get somewhat annoyed with us. Okay. So let's right. get it on the ball, right? There's some eggs in the middle. So there's the eggs in the middle. So the queen's laying very well. This is yeah. food on the outside. Okay. So this is where they're going to overwinter. So again, you've got more um, in the middle. Okay. Again, Peter, anytime you feel okay. uncomfortable, just let me know. Move this box. Okay. Yeah. This one should be fine. Okay, we got the two top boxes. We're keeping them organized by which hive they came from. So how you doing, Peter? I'm doing good. Okay. I got a few uh, bees around me, but I'm okay. Not feeling heebie-jeebies or anything. If you want to toss that in the back of the gator. And as you can see, they really like this one. Why is it heavier? Completely full of all the wall. You can tell all the way, right? Oh yeah. And as you can see, we're only going to get a few out of this hive, out of this one, where the middle ones are full. I put this one on late in the season. You put this box on late in the season? Yes. Okay. So they built out the center but yeah. not the edges. So this one's good to go for the winter right here, right? That's the way it's going to run for the winter. I'll okay. put the other stuff back on it probably um, late March. Okay. Okay. Now remember I told you this was your workout. Be ready. Got it? That's a lot of honey. <laughs> Thank you.
more for the vacuum gator. The queen extruder. Excluder. Excluder. I'll treat the yard with pyrethian at the end of the season. It does two things. One, it'll take down the fire ants and the sugar ants that are around the edge. And then also there's a parasite called a, a hive beetle. And the way it reproduces is it lays eggs in your hive. They curl out with the larva, go into the ground, burrow, and then come out. When's the last time you opened these up? Uh, last Friday or Saturday. Uh, generally, you feed them. So, here, if you want to take a look at the slide. So high, it will probably be cleaned next year. You can see that's where she's laying. So that's the laying pattern. So that's all they can use for the winter. See the queen? Oh, yeah, with the dog. Cool. Yep, so that's the queen. I had a pretty good idea that they had the most. about the wind knocking these over? Uh, no. It's like when they're heavy enough, generally, it's like we're, unless they were going to get like a hurricane, you can strap them down. But, but generally, we don't have to worry about that. Oh, this is the one we're taking to part. It's just going to go straight to the left. Goes on top of the other two stacks, right? Correct. Okay, we're finished. 18 frames of Georgetown, Texas honey. Georgetown? Oh, yeah. Uh, sweep them out. There's one clump, or two clumps, two clumps, and four clumps. Interesting. If you came home ordinarily and you saw this in your house, you'd freak out. But since you're processing honey, it's not a big deal.
Okay, we brought the empties out for Lano and Georgetown. Now I'm suited up. I'm going to come over here and look at the smorgasbord buffet going on. These are bees from anywhere coming to clean the remains. Nom nom nom. They still maintain the order of the boxes from each hive, or are they random now? I don't care if the storm, the frames are all random too. So they know they're not near the queen, so they know they're not going to make hive anymore, we're just going to eat. Okay, these are the frames that had some but not enough. Right? Right. So. Not enough to spin. Yeah. What I'm going to do is take the empty ones out of here. We don't need to smoke them out? No. It's just relatively small, huh? Make sure I don't get the clean. So I see some people sometimes they don't wear beekeeping outfits. It seems kind of dangerous. Or it depends upon the types of bees you have. So there are certain breeds that are very, very calm. Um, Carnolians. Carnolians, I could probably work without a beekeeping suit on. But these are buckfasts and bee weavers, and they have a tendency to defend. And since they have a tendency to defend, that means uh, they will sting. So the people you see doing really nice beekeeping stuff are generally have a very, very calm bee. And since these guys generally stay in the pasture all by themselves without me doing much to them, uh, they take care of themselves. They're kind of Jersey bees. <laughs> When they sting, do they sense it and then others start others stinging? Will follow. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the reason why, you know, I, when I do a beekeeping class, the thing I always say is I always wear a suit because if it's been three weeks since I've been in the hive, if they decided to make their own queen, I no longer know the genetics. And the nicest hive in the world in 23 days can become an Africanized top. And the only time you'll know it is when you lift the top. And you keep so, an EpiPen around too, right? I keep an EpiPen around, but I usually, you know, 15, 20, 25 stings, not enough to bother me. But again, if you don't know what you're getting into, and it's a roll of the dice each time um, during the summer, it's not worth the risk, yep. right? Unless I'm trying to get clicks, and I'm not in this to get clicks. Yep. Okay. So you can see. Oh, entrance ridges. Okay, so you get less 
traffic yeah. than this one, which is still wide open. Right. So this is an entrance reducer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, the ones that have extra supers on them. We're going to take the supers off. Oh. So you can leave it on there because this only has two. So this one's coming off. So we'll start out with this. And then David and I are going to have to come back and put entrance reducers in when you're gone, Peter. So. The be gone goes first. And I doubt that this one's empty. So all I want to do is chase the bees out of it. So I'd already moved the frames out of this one to other places up here. So why do you only leave two level, two box levels? That's all they really need. Okay. Right, so I generally keep the hives. A, this is a deep and this is a medium. Um, commercial guys usually run one and only one size. So almost a, kind of like Southwest Airlines. So mm -hmm. they'll only run this size box. Mm -hmm. um, so what I do is I give them one deep. Other people run two deeps. The problem is that it's much, much harder to find the queen in two deeps than it is in mm -hmm. a deep and a medium. And that's more than enough for Texas, right? Because um, it's not like they're going to have seven months of freezing cold weather wrapped in burlap. Mm -hmm. So um, I can feed them, I can easily get to them, and it's more than enough space to make a decent sized hive. And then when spring comes along, on goes the entrance reducer and the supers, I want them to fill up with honey. So let's see, we're taking, we're only taking two boxes. So we're going to take this box, which is empty. Yeah. We're going to take the box off the silver stripes, the one underneath the peacock pattern. Uh, we're going to take, the peacock is going to stay on the hive because it's my peacock hive. So what I did was when the peacock needed, um, it wasn't going to make it through the winter. So the queen had died, so what I did was I put the peacock hive deep on, silver, on uh, lemon lime stripes, and I put it super on um, silver stripes. But this is an actual hive. So since it's an actual hive, I'm going to put the medicines on these because I would never harvest from these two boxes. Mm -hmm. So this is the super for this guy. This is the super for this mm -hmm. one. So the only one that's coming off is that. Okay. And so the only other um, we have is this one here. By the way, I've been calling them boxes. They're called supers. So this is the super. Yeah, the small. This is the deep. Okay. Okay. But all in all, it's just a box. Okay. I know a little bit of chasing. So we don't have them. Have to fly all the way back to the front yard for no reason. And also, the more sunlight you have on top of the fume board, the faster they come out because it heats up the board, which forces the stinky stuff to spread faster. Okay, David. Back to Gator. She's going to go straight in the front yard so we're done harvesting for the day. That's. Hedgehog goes back on the top. And that's the end for today. That's it. For a snack. You see two store-bought honeys here, sort of translucent. I've got the Georgetown cream honey and I've got the Lano honey here in this barred container and you can see how how that stuff flows. This stuff is thick. 
Time for a healthy snack of fresh ground peanuts, organic hazelnut chocolate spread, and some thick creamed honey. Mmm, wow.